out of nowhere, we were like, okay, so I know that was like that one eighth of a page scene, but actually uh, we're gonna need to break the garage door of this house, someone's house we're shooting in, break a wit car window, uh, we're gonna destroy a couch. In fact, that couch, it's all, you see it all for the first time in the take. And when he ripped into it, which wasn't planned, you know, until the night before, we didn't know we were gonna do that. So we'd never practiced it. Props wasn't ready for that. It was full of feathers. And so when I came around the corner, it looked like Christmas. It was like, it was like feathers everywhere. And I like almost started laughing. And instead of laughing, I turned it into the, you're sick, you know, because I was like, I thought I was gonna start laughing otherwise. What was in the script was I'd just walk into his office and I'd drop divorce papers and say, I want a divorce. And that was it. And then the night before we were shooting that, Marty, Leo and I were like, okay, what are we shooting tomorrow? And we're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna ask for the divorce. And we all went, it just feels like we're missing something here, doesn't it? And we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just seems like there's gotta be. And so we looked in the book that was written by Jordan Belfort. We went back to him and I was like, there was this great thing he wrote in there. And anyways, we started like riffing and we locked ourselves in a room till like three in the morning and came up with all of that, and even the sex scene that happens before that. Mm. Um, and, and, and then so we came to work, and a brilliant first AD, Adam Somner, probably was tearing his hair out because out of nowhere we were like, okay, so I know that was like that one eighth of a page scene, but actually uh, we're gonna need to break the garage door of this house, someone's house we're shooting in, break a wit car window, uh, we're gonna destroy a couch. In fact, that couch, it's all, you see it all for the first time in the take. And when he ripped into it, which wasn't planned, you know, until the night before, we didn't know we were gonna do that. So we'd never practiced it. Props wasn't ready for that. It was full of feathers. And so when I came around the corner, it looked like Christmas. It was like, it was like feathers everywhere. And I like almost started laughing. And instead of laughing, I turned it into the, you're sick, you know, because I was like, I thought I was gonna start laughing otherwise. But yeah, a lot of, uh, it was, it was crazy. But that's incredible. So you were, were you like, 22? I just turned 22. 22, you yeah. had that much confidence to kind of get involved in, you know, riffing on changing a script for Martin Scorsese. Yeah, I mean, we were a couple of months into the shoot at that point. So like the, the you know, the, the tone had been set that it was like a bit of a free for all on that film. It was kind of like <laughs> you, you, the crazier you are, the more Marty's gonna love it and the more screen time you're gonna get. So it was a bit of a sink or swim situation. So yeah, by that point I was ready to throw out any and then, ideas. And did he set the gold standard for direction for all the directors that followed? I mean, how was how did you he feel about it? He only ever gave me one piece of direction on that whole film. In six months that we shot it, he one time gave me direction. Not that he didn't, we spoke all the time. He'd tell stories. I'd like sit at Video Village and he'd tell stories about mafia members and old film stars and all this kind of stuff. So we you know, hung out all the time, but he didn't actually give direction. Um, and the, uh, the first day on set, I remember being like, okay, so I think my intention for the scene, because I'm a meticulous note taker and preparer. And he kind of gave me a look kind of like, why are you telling me this? <laughs> that's that's your job, I hired you. He didn't say any of that, that's mm. the feeling I got. So uh, the only piece of direction I got was in the water throwing scene. I remember at one point he's like, can you be more on your toes? And I didn't know if he meant metaphorically, like figuratively mm. or literally. It was like a leaning <laughs> forward spatial thing. I wasn't sure, so I did a bit of both. Um, and, and that was kind of it as far as direction went. Uh, but he'd, he'd say things throughout the shoot that stuck with me forever. One thing being actually when we were shooting that shot, running down the stairs, and he was like, oh, when we were coming up with it, he was like, yes, it's a great stairwell. And he just turned to me and goes, every great movie has a stair shot. And I was like, I'll never forget that. <laughs> I tell so many directors that, I'm like, Martin Scorsese says every great movie has a stairwell shot, so get the stairs in there. <laughs> um, you had to be quite bold as well, your entry into the film, mm. you're not wearing very much. No. How confident did you feel about that? How, oh. how much did you kind of question that? A lot, <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I, it, was, it was just, it, I, it was my first film in America. I, honestly, I, I know this sounds silly now, knowing how big the movie became. At the time I thought, no one's gonna notice me in this film, mm. it kind of doesn't matter what I do in this film, because everyone's gonna be focused on Leo and everything and I'll just kind of like slip under the radar. Uh, so things like that, but I'm not gonna lie, yeah, I had a couple of shots of tequila before that scene because I was <laughs> very nervous, very, very nervous. And then you're right, I mean, the reception was huge, huge. absolutely huge. Yeah. Were you prepared for that? No, and it's also that funny thing where you make a film but it doesn't come out till a year later, so your mm. life kind of goes on and, and then you're kind of on two films deep into something else and, and then it gets released and, and everyone's like, Paul, oh, let's talk about that thing you did a year mm -hmm. and a half ago. And you're like, oh my goodness, okay. Um, 
So I was, I was already into the swing of the next lot of things that I was working on. And this sort of sounds apocryphal, but I think it was true. You were in a kind of flat share in Clapham at that point. Yeah. Oh, no, that came afterwards. That came after Wolf of Wall Street. But yes, I lived and two That's of my former roommates weird. are in the crowd tonight, actually. Ah. Special <laughs> shout out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we can see you. Um, uh, yes, we lived with, I think there were seven of us at one point in a, in a share house in, in Clapham, but that was after, after Wolf of Wall Street, but before it had come out. Okay. Yeah.